discussing a uh, common problem through an accessory or on a squat. Uh, one of the common problems mainly see with people is uh, their bar path and on the way on the way up it's a little bit skewed so the bar path down is relatively straight just like it needs to be and then as you're driving up it's shooting forwards and that weight is going from midfoot forwards towards the, the front of your toes so this sort of uh thing is massive common problem with people who just like lack that tightness in the hole or are quite um just don't have the proper reception of as you're dropping into the hole like not losing that brace so a lot of the times i'll uh, prescribe pull squats and in a section he's going to go through uh, multiple different variations we use and these variations just tend to be uh progressions on each other so the first one might be pull squat when you're in the hole and that is literally just just to get the proper reception of when you're pausing being nice and braced and being in the right position when you're not doing it properly you obviously in your pause squat it's going to accentuate that problem and you're going to end up instead of being a little bit forwards you're going to be very far forwards right once you've mastered that and that tightness in the first pause squat a lot of things i tend to use then will be uh, double pause for this problem so you pause in the hole then you pause just above the hole on the way up and then drive directly up so again, if you get the pause wrong in number one and you end up shooting forwards and you're pausing above the hole but your bar path is forwards, you're going to find really hard to pause there because you're going to foot, your weight is going to be towards the front of your foot and that's going to be a big difficulty of managing that. And then the third one that we'll go through that I tend to use again as a progress is like multiple pause squats and you can use this in any sort of way you want but it'll get people to go sort of like start point down this is the hole and then you go back up there pause back down pause up pause down pause then all the way back up so you do multiple pauses around that position Obviously, the load's going to be a lot lower than if you were going to do a normal pause squat, but it really forces you to, if you're getting it wrong once and you're coming forwards a little bit on the first one or back a little bit, whatever it might be, when you go into the hole to the next one, it's going to feel worse than the first time. It's going to feel worse than the second time, third time, and every multiple pause is going to feel worse if you get it wrong. So uh, that's what we're going to go through now. So first, first of all, we're going to just demonstrate a pause squat. So... Just get under the bar in your normal position. Just walk the bar out. It's definitely too high. Ah, just tiptoe it out. We're all right. <laughs> so everything's going to be exactly the same as his normal squat. So what we're going to do is just literally pause in the hole. And if you pause in the hole, but like relatively loose. So just go in. I'd probably squat the way you usually squat. I know you squat. Like. Nice so relax. So that's what a lot of people do. You see like that pelvis tuck under and they relatively high with the chest, but like there's no brace there. So come up to standing for me. So the whole difference is you're really going to focus on tightness from like here downwards and keep that tension in you. If you're doing a pull squat right, your quads should be burning for the first two seconds because you're really loading through that whole area. So you're going to brace there, nice big set, and then as you come down into the whole squat, stay tight, stay tight, stay tight. So you're getting rid of that tightness there. Everything stays nice and solid. And now you see much more leg drive. Like, Sean's, he hasn't really done much mobility stuff, so he clearly can't find depth there. But imagine he was a little bit deeper. So that would be poor squat <laughs> number one and come to standing. Yes, yeah, imagine terrible squat. <laughs> so, if it, but if he was more warmed up, he would yeah, be in there a little bit yeah. deeper. So that's poor squat number one, and you just work in that through load but enough load that your technique is still good, you're not breaking down. Pause squat number two will be pause in the hole, then pause just above the hole. So uh, do it wrong first, so be relaxed in the hole. So off you go, relaxed in the hole, so he falls into it, t tail tucks under, and now as he drives forwards and up, so pause halfway up, stop, too far, back down a little bit. That's where I pause number two. Don't know if you can see that from the side position, but that bar path, because he was loose here, 
it shot forwards, so now his bar is sort of towards his toes, right? So if you come up to standing, this time he's gonna be a little bit tighter in the hole. So come down position, a little bit more tightness, squeeze that bar, better position. As he drives up now, up there, that bar pass much straighter. So he's now mid foot, that's pause number two, and then up. So that would be a double pause. So it would be pause in the hole, pause above the hole, and then up. So I try and fix that bar path. Now the next one, right, you'll listen up to this, right? <laughs> so <laughs> we're gonna pause in the hole, above the hole, in the hole, above the hole, in the hole, above the hole, all the way up. So it's three, it's three pauses in each position. So we're gonna do, do it wrong first. So just a little looseness in the bottom. Off you go. So again, you're getting that tuck under, that bar shifted forwards. Pause above the hole, drop in. Pause above the hole. That bar pass going all over the place, back down. Back up, back down, and all the way up. So what you see there, when he, he was doing it, his bar path was sort of shifting forwards and backwards, forwards and backwards. Also, his knees were like not tracking simil like similar to each one. So sometimes the knees would shoot forwards, sometimes they would be a little bit more vertical. They just weren't consistent. So no pressure now, because <laughs> this one's gonna be absolutely perfect. Same thing, off you go, but a little bit tighter now. So really hold that tightness through your brace. Good, then up, decent, back down, back up, tight as you drop in, better, up, back down, up, and all the way up. Good, so that is like straight away even on empty bar and you're trying to do it right. Sometimes there's a little bit of a deviation of knee track and bar path because it's a very hard exercise, so you don't need like a huge amount of weight for that, but it really helps with proprioception and focusing on where your bar path needs to be because from pause one to pause two, you're going to have a problem if it's not perfect. Every time you drop in and up, it's gonna be a big difference. Finally, you're not, yeah, you're not dead. <laughs> Realistically, this is something that a lot of people don't do because it's hard, uh, but it's not rocket science when I'm working at accessories to do with the squat. It's nothing that's absolutely crazy and nothing that's gonna reinvent the wheel. It's just breaking down your squat and figuring out where your weaknesses are, whether you've got you know, valgus or your knees are, uh, sorry, your glutes are weak or inactive or you're really struggling with your, your quad strength or your hamstring strength or whatever it might be, whether it's your bracing, so you've got to learn how to brace and do breathing techniques. Like, once you've worked that out, then you can work on it. Like this, I'm not saying that safety bar squats will be the be all and end all and will increase your squat by 30, 30 kilos. It might do if you know, you've, you've got horrendously lagging quads, but you're using that as an excuse and you're just saying, oh, my, my quads are weak. So safety bar squat might be good for you. Same with like doing high bar, it might be good for you if you've got uh, lagging in, in, in the, the quad department. If your glutes are inactive or your glutes are weak, you're gonna be you know, doing hip thrusts, you know, glute bridges, you're gonna be doing uh, like things like monster walks, stuff like that. Just if you're a sedentary job and you're, you can't activate them, then you're gonna try and work that more, right? Same with, if, hamstrings, you might be doing some stiff leg deadlifts, you might be doing some like single leg banded uh, like uh, leg curls, like just to, just to try and get uh, more activation through there. Uh, it's figuring out what your weakness is and working on it, not ignoring it, and working on it through a variation. There are thousands of different variations and different exercises out there, and it's not doing, usually the ones you like are the ones you're good at, so you probably don't need. It's more the ones that, oh, I really don't like these. Uh, they're probably doing some work. Sweet.